they, they live, they're from Rochester. Yeah. They end up having to run a U-Haul, and then they got to drive it back from here to here. Oh, wow. U-Haul, you used to be able to leave it. Right. That's one way. Yeah. And now they want you to bring it back. Hmm. I felt bad for them. Man. Yeah. I was going to give them a ride, but they had too much. I couldn't get it all in my car. Right. Huh. That's a lot, too. I met a new lady today. Her name is Beverly. Uh -huh. She's a new client. Yeah. And I don't know how I ended up at the end talking about church, but she said she hadn't been to church in a long time. So then she asked me where I went, and I told her, and I said, and we're very Pentecostal. Yeah. She said, the more Pentecostal, the better. Yeah. So she took down the name of the church and the dates and the time, or the times and the days of our services. So. She may come sometime, I don't know. All her right. name is Beverly and her husband's name is Jack. All right, we hope to see you. Right. Let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together one more time to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask you, Lord, that you bless those that have made requests known unto you on this day. We ask you, Lord, to move by your grace and your power. Send forth your healing. Send forth your deliverance. Remember, Brother Charles, Lord, touch his mind and his spirit. And, Lord, keep him under your watchful care. And we ask you, Lord, that you bless uh, the Bible study on tonight. We ask you to grant the door by us. Let something be said or done to encourage us to inspire our hearts as we see the day approaching. Father, we thank you and praise you. Give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It's good uh, to come to the house of the Lord, and especially uh, midday service, mid midweek service, you know, and Bible study. I uh, believe it was to be uh, to keep the saints encouraged uh, midweek. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got we to encourage ourselves, and, and, and uh, we certainly thank God uh, for an opportunity, and we should, uh, I know you guys don't, but, uh, we don't take it lightly, and uh, that we come together to study and to get into the Word of God. Uh, scripture says it is quick and it's power, and then it also talks about what the Scripture the word is used for, for correction, instruction, and righteousness that will be, uh, paraphrasing now, that will be thoroughly furnished, that will be very complete in our walk with God. Amen? Uh, unto good works, the Bible says. I want you to turn with me uh, to the book of St. Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 24. And the Lord seems to be impressing, impressing upon us that, that, that we get ourselves ready and in position for his coming, you know. And I don't have to tell you, I'm sure that the Holy Spirit, as it speaks to me, it speaks to you. And, and encouraging you even the more, and then letting you know even the more that Jesus is soon to come. Amen. You know, he's soon to come. And 
and there's no private interpretation of the scripture. And that's one thing I, I love about the Lord is that um, the Lord, he is ever <coughs> revealing and he'll send his messages to different people and he'll speak to us in different ways yeah. so that we can all be on one accord. Amen. With what he's doing. Amen. The Lord, he wants us to know what he's doing. He wants us to know the times and the seasons by which he's doing what he's doing. So, um, and, and that all makes sense. You know why I say that? I say that because the Lord is involved in our lives and we ought to be involved in his life. And um, if you're in relationship, wouldn't you want the right hand to know what the left hand is doing? <laughs> it makes sense, right? To be on the same page, uh, to communicate uh, with such sacrifices. The Bible says God is what? Well pleased. Amen. All right, Matthew chapter 24. And um, hopefully I can get through this whole chapter. So I, um, I won't necessarily be going verse by verse. But we're after something here tonight um, to, to see what the Lord wants us to do in this time. Uh, uh, as our reader to read for us, uh, beginning at verse number one. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. Uh -huh. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Now, Jesus, he had. At chapter 23, uh, toward the end of that chapter, that's when he was making his plea that he would uh, want to see uh, the Israelites gathered together. You know, they were divided. They were, they were under bad leadership, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and, and they were under the dominion of the Roman authority. And Jesus wanted to plea for them to all come together. So here we see, read that verse again. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. So he was there in the temple and he, he walked away from it. Read. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. So you know, the temple, it had, it had, it had the worship area in it, but then, you know, it had other sections to it. And at this particular time, this was a temple that uh, they, they had put together, and uh, uh, Jesus, you know, went in for temple worship, and his disciples were impressed. They were impressed by what they saw. So Jesus took it as an opportunity to take them to another level. All right, read. Verse number two. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Uh -huh. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So now Jesus is operating now in his prophetic ministry. Uh, he's really uh, 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 proving that he is the Christ, the anointed king, the anointed priest, and the anointed prophet. He is the anointed prophet. Uh, so, so that's what makes him the Messiah. And here he begins to prophesy. You know that that this temple that you see is um, uh, is literally saying it's going to be destroyed. And historians said uh, historians say that it was destroyed seventy years after Jesus's resurrection. So it was destroyed. All right, read. Verse three. Uh huh. So they, so they asked Jesus three questions. You know, when shall these things be? And he's referring to that, what shall these things be? They're referring to uh, the destruction of the temple. Then they asked him, uh, what should be the sign of thy coming? And it says, and when is it the end of the world? 
Very important questions. We should be asking these questions even ourselves. You know, there's nothing wrong with inquiring of the Lord. And when they ask about uh, the end of the world, they're uh, not necessarily uh, asking about uh, when will the world cease to exist because we know that the world will always exist because God will always exist. But they were talking about the world talking, referring to this age, this time, this time period, this age. And uh, so Jesus, uh, he begins in this, his discourse with the rest of this particular chapter. He's going to give them the answers to their questions and more. Uh, Jesus, when you when you seek God and, and begin to ask and, and to knock and to seek, you'll get more than what you bargained for. <laughs> uh, and that's a good thing uh, because the Lord is always wanting to show us more. Amen? Uh, he, he wants us to know more. He wants us to be wise. Does he? Uh, he wants us to be knowledgeable of his will. In fact, uh, in, in, in scriptures in the book of Isaiah, it talks about people don't know and understand me. You know, he wants us to know and understand him. And more importantly, he wants us to be ready. Amen? Uh, hallelujah. He wants us to be ready. Thank you, Lord. The most important thing that you can do, two things. Get saved, stay saved. <laughs> Am I right? Uh, get saved, stay saved. Uh, two, two, uh, uh, most important things you can do. Get saved, stay saved. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, you don't have nothing to do with your, as I heard one uh, preacher say, you don't have anything to do with your genesis, but you got everything to do with your exodus. <laughs> uh, you got everything to do with that. Uh, and it's and it's God's will that no one should perish. Amen? So he wants us to come to what? The knowledge of the truth. So they, they asked some very important questions. Three questions. They asked, what, what, what? Uh, read that verse again. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. Uh -huh. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, uh -huh. Shall these things be? Alright, he said, when shall these things be? Referring to the destruction of the temple. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? We should ask that question. Lord, when, what is the sign uh, of thy coming? Read. And I know that the scripture says, and, and Jesus taught it, he says it's a perverse generation that looks for a sign. But he wasn't talking about us. <laughs> Seekers, huh? those that want to know so that we can be what? Ready. Huh? Y'all remember the parable about the, uh, the ten virgins? Five were wise and five were what? Foolish. Huh? And, and they were virgins. That virgins means that all ten of them were pure. Huh? They were holy. You follow me? Uh, uh, and, and it's good to be pure and holy, but but you also have to be ready. Amen? Uh, and, and the five that were foolish, they didn't uh, endure to the end. Uh, the bridegroom delayed his coming. Uh, and, and they didn't have enough oil in their lamps for the ceremony, uh, which uh, had to be very important because they, they, they left when they heard that he was coming to go and get some more oil. And the, and the, five, wives, the, the five wives uh, uh, said, when they were asked, give us some of your oil, they said what? Huh? What did they say? Huh? They said, not so. Huh? At least there be not enough for us. So they tell you uh, uh, in, his, in his parable there that being ready, it, it should come at, 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 at any cost. Uh, and don't let anyone, no matter who they are, uh, distract you from his coming. Uh, and then the ten or the five 
When the bridegroom came, they went in. And the Bible explicitly says, and the door was shut. Uh, but he's saying that 
and the end is not yet. Uh, so, so those who say that, wow, we've heard that all the time, uh, and Jesus hasn't come, he said in his word that, 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 that they're going to keep saying that, but that is not the end. Uh, that's not the end. You follow? Uh, that's why we got to read the scriptures and read it right. Uh, it's not the end. All right, read. Seven. Uh-huh. For nation shall rise against nation. Uh-huh. And kingdom against kingdom. Yeah. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Now notice what he said. All of these are the beginning of what? Sorrow. So sorrows, <laughs> uh, no doubt, have begun. Uh, but it's not, but it is not the end. You follow me? Uh, the things are being set up. Uh, this is not the end. Uh, and, I, and I'm gonna say this, I'm getting ahead of myself in the Bible study, but this is just the beginning of, of the tribulation period. Uh, the tribulation period, he's going to talk about it, it's going to set in. Uh, but these things that you see now, uh, Jesus prophesied about uh, so that when we see them, we don't trip out about it, but we get ourselves ready. When we see them, we don't uh, uh, faint and get discouraged, but it's, it's like a, a time and a season we know there's going to come something else. Uh, in one of his parables, he said, take note of the fig tree. Uh, you see that it's getting ready to sprout. It's, it's buds. You know that summer is now. Uh, you follow me? You know that the season is going to change. Uh, so he said these things, telling us that, that we've got to Understand that there's going to be another season. Uh, and by this time, when that other season takes place, the church is going to be raptured out of here. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. You can say that again, sis. Hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But notice, those that were what? Ready. Ready. With you. <laughs> uh, we got to get ourselves ready. Am I right? Oh, uh, my, 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 my God. I feel like you went to a Bible study on how do you keep yourself ready? Uh, <laughs> uh, survive. Uh, uh, we got to keep ourselves ready. Uh, and you know, uh, one of the main things to do, especially the things that are going on, you got to praise him. Uh, you got to lift him up. Uh, you got to magnify him. Uh, uh, you got to worship him. Because if you don't, uh, all the stuff that's going on will get you down. <laughs> uh, you got to look for something that's positive. Uh, this coming is positive. Am I right? Hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah. All right, good verse. All right, read. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Uh huh. And 
You don't have to go far. Just turn on the news and you'll hear uh, mass murders. Uh, uh, am I right? Uh, killings. Uh, wars. Rumors of wars. Am I right? Uh, but this is not the end. Uh, he says the prophecy of Christ being fulfilled. And, and if you didn't, uh, I'm just saying I know you all do, but if anybody didn't believe in Christ, then they should believe in him now. Uh, because what he has said is coming to pass. Uh, in other words, he's a true prophet. Uh, hallelujah. His prophecies are being made manifest even up to this day. Uh, am I right? Uh, he's still relevant. <laughs> hey, how do you know that he's still relevant? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, so that's why it's important to continue to read your Bible. It's not a newspaper. Uh, it's an oracle of God. Uh, that's a living, it's the living word. Uh, it's the breathing logos. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the logos. Am I right? Uh, and it's still relevant.
that's different. And, and when we see these things, uh, we ought not allow these things to take us away from our steadfastness. Am I right? Because uh, these things must be. It's been prophesied by Jesus. Am I right? And we see it happening before our eyes. And because we see it happening before our eyes, we ought to do like Paul said, gird up uh, the voice of our what? mind. Uh, be sober. Uh, be vigilant. Amen? Be watchful. Uh, I hope I'm talking to somebody here today. Uh, be sober mind. Don't get drunk. Not with the world, not be vigilant. Watch and pray. Yeah, huh? Watch and pray. Uh, when you keep your head in the game. Uh, don't sleep uh, as they sleep in the night. Uh, watch. Amen. Yeah. Uh, what verse do you mean? Uh, I read what you say. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive them. And we know that that's not. But it's not the end. <laughs> now, a lot of false prophets have gone out. Uh, hallelujah. And, and we know that this is not the end. Uh, read. And because iniquity shall abound, uh -huh. the love of many shall wax cold. Now, isn't iniquity? Iniquity is gross sin. Uh, and abound means it's, 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 it's heaping up on and heaping up. Uh, piling up and piling up uh, iniquity, gross sin. There's things now that is happening in this age that we have never thought about. Uh, not five, ten years ago. Uh, things are going on. Uh, things are happening. And, and uh, uh, how can I say it? Let me say it. Help me here, Holy Ghost. That, that even on the news, uh, something tragic can happen and as horrific, they don't even make that the headline anymore. You know, because so much other tragic stuff is in the whole, so much other horrific stuff is going on. Uh, uh, that, 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 that we see in this world uh, is iniquity abounding. Uh, Abounding. All right, read that verse again. And because the iniquity shall abound, uh -huh. the love of many shall wax cold. Now, now, I don't know about you all, but uh, how how many of you know your neighbors? Huh? How many of you know them that live uh, 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 next door to you, or across the street from you, or down the street from you? Uh, we used to know them, uh, but because, you know, people in neighborhoods now ain't even close. Uh, uh, that's because the love of many is waxing cold. Uh, thank you, Lord. We got to watch. These things are happening. Amen? Uh, now, I ain't telling you to go down the street and get friendly with your neighbor because you know you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just giving you an example of, of, of the state that we're in. When we were growing up, we knew our neighbors. In fact, we went over to their house, sat in their table, huh? Huh? Played, played in their backyard. Huh? Oh my God, don't do that today. Huh? You, 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 you. <laughs> Peaceful demonstration. Uh, trying to 
feeds your lies. You follow me? Uh, and deny stuff right in front of your face. Uh, uh, desensitize you. People nowadays express their evil desires even the more than they used to do. Am I right? Oh, uh, you got to walk. Uh, watch then that 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 who up in the Holy Ghost here saying this. This is the word of God. Uh, don't assimilate yourself to that. Uh, don't be like them. Uh, uh, be discreet. Be holy. Uh, watch your conversation. Watch what you wear. Uh, watch what you do. Watch where you go. Amen. Uh, watch who you keep company with. Am I right? Don't assimilate yourself because the world is doing it, then I can do it too. Uh, no. Our kingdom, <laughs> here we go, our kingdom is not in this world. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're from another kingdom. Uh, under different rule and authority. Am I right? Uh, are you reminded of your authority and whose group and whose you are? Will come. Huh? 
Focus on the end. That's why he said, count it all to it. Uh, when you go what? Through diverse temptations. Focus on the end. Uh, the end is eternal life. Now, I'm going to say this. Thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost, you bring this stuff back to my mind. Ain't y'all glad about that? Amen. <laughs> I hope the Holy Ghost will teach me. Yes. Amen. Amen. And, and there was a sermon uh, I was preaching. I believe I was at Brother Heaven. And as I was preaching it, uh, the, the, the word of the Lord, the Holy Ghost spoke to me because I was preaching about uh, God's promises. And he said, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, uh, uh, people need to really focus on what God has promised. Huh? What God has said. Amen. His promises. Okay. Huh? Because if you're not focused on his promises and what he has said, then you'll lose the battle. Huh? Because you think that there's nothing worth fighting for. Huh? We Some great and precious promises. Now, when you read that in the scriptures, when it says great and precious, you got to magnify that a bazillion times. Uh, because what God calls great, uh, we can't even fathom uh, what He calls great. Uh, you follow what I'm saying? Uh, so when the scripture says He has made it to us, uh, those that endure to the end. Some great and precious promises. Huh? That by these, now notice, why, why you got to fight? That by these, you can be partakers huh, of God's divine nature. Huh? Having escaped huh, the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now watch this. Uh, uh, the reason why you got to focus on his so that you can escape the temptation that you're enduring right now. Uh, huh? You with me? He said, there is no temptation that has taken us but what? Such as common man. But God is what? Faithful. Faith. Who will suffer you to be what? Tempted above that which you are what? And with the temptation he's already made of what? That's his promise. Huh? And if you focus on what God has promised you, what are you fighting for? Huh? Eternal life. <laughs> oh, that's the main thing. Eternal life. Am I right? know that uh, eternal life is not a works, right? That that he gives uh, 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 we're saved by grace and that through what? Faith, right? But but your your salvation is always under attack. The enemy wants to continually destroy you. How many of y'all believe that today? The devil is not your friend. Huh? Huh? Am I right? He had, and he's still huh? at, at wiping out uh, not only the saints, but he, he wipes out communities. He wipes out churches. Huh? Skill that.
together. He said, they turned around and bit me. And he said, why'd you bite me? I took care of you. You know I was a snake. Uh, I did what I was supposed to. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Told him I wasn't going to bite you. Together ourselves, yeah. we're very uncomfortable. Yeah. We're not happy. You know, we 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 we're, we're miserable. Miserable. Yes. Jeez. Very uncomfortable. But there are times we make things fit. Yeah. You know, even though you know we know we're not supposed to. God warned us not to do it. But we like well, it's like you can change God's mind, and that ain't gonna happen. Right. That can't happen because yeah. God can. He, he can't change. He don't change. But when we try to make things fit, and there are times when we do, we're so unhappy. So unhappy. Do you ever have buyer's remorse? I bought a car. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, as soon as I drove, drove off the lot with it, I started feeling bad. Yeah. <laughs> but you're stuck with it. <laughs>
If you've got to make the situation fit in your own mind, then you shouldn't do it. Amen? Amen. If you've got to deceive yourself uh, to, to make a situation better, you shouldn't do it. Am I right? Amen. This is good stuff here. This is good Bible teaching. Oh. All right, where are we at? All right, read. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nations, uh -huh. and then shall the end come. Now, that's, that's been uh, this dispensation is going to end this age when the gospel is preached throughout all the nations. So that should tell you something. It hasn't happened yet. Hmm? It's getting close. And notice what the emphasis is on. If you want Jesus to come, start witnessing to more people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> come on in. <laughs> if you want him to come, tell more people about the gospel. That's that's what it hinges on. Read that verse again so we can get it. So anybody ask you, when is the end coming? You can give them an intelligent answer. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world uh -huh. for witness unto all the nations. Now, it's going to be preached. And shall the end come. Amen. It's going to be preached for witness unto all nations. Huh? And throughout all and he said, then shall the end come. Then shall the rapture take place. Amen. Amen. So it's happening. Am I right? So um, that means that the communists and all those other people that are persecuting Christians have to be preached to. Yes. And how are they going to be preached to if they keep stopping everybody? Well, God has to make a way. Because he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against And he will make a way where there is no way. Yes. Well, you know, they could probably preach you more than we realize. Yeah, that's true, too. Because they, they hate God probably more, and they got to know him to hate him. Hallelujah. Thank you. I would thank you. Thank you, Lord. All right. What verse we in? 15. I right, read you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation uh -huh. spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Yes. Stand in the holy place. Uh -huh. Now so read it and let him understand. Now, now Jesus said, whosoever read it, let him understand. He's saying that because now he's switching streams. He he's he's told us when the end of the church age is. Now, in verse 15, he's going into the tribulation period. Y'all with me? Uh, it's good stuff. All right. So now he's talking about the uh, abomination of desolation spoken of the dead. And that just simply means that uh, there's going to come a time where the temple in Jerusalem is going to be desecrated. Uh, and it's going to provoke your God. Follow abominations. All right, read. Uh huh. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Now he said, uh, uh, Brother Bob said something to me uh, uh, Sunday. He said, uh, "No, I wasn't giving up. It was somebody else. Uh, may have said it to me today. Sometimes things blur together. Have you ever been there? Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna say keep living." <laughs> But, but, uh, uh, there was somebody who said that to me today, but it just aptly fit the Bible study. That, that in the end, uh, uh, God uh, really doesn't talk a whole lot about America. Right. Uh, but he talks about uh, Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, that city, Judea. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's where his, his capital is going to uh, be set up, right. the rule, the authority, 
Amen? Amen. Uh, so if you haven't been there yet, you wait, wait around. We'll be there sooner or later. <laughs> All right? Now, uh, read that verse again. 15 or 16. Uh, 16. 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Now, in the tribulation period, there's going to be some terrible things that are going to happen. Yep. Huh? And the, the church will not be exposed to that. If you want to read the book of Revelations, the church is raptured after uh, chapter number three. Yep. Chapter number four is, is the tribulation period. Yep. Amen? Amen? And Jesus is describing the tribulation period. Yep. Here. I read.
People have never experienced that, but it's going to happen ever, ever, ever. It's going to be brand new.
as sure as that what's going to happen later is going to happen. Am I right? So it doesn't take rocket science to, to say, hey, wake up, Frank. Live this world now. Am I right? Uh, read. 27. Uh -huh. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even into the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So now he's telling me he's going to come back. And that's in that millennium period. Uh, after the thousand years. Uh, Jesus is teaching up here. Uh, he says he's coming back. Amen. Coming back for those that are, are going through the tribulation. Right? Uh, all right. He's doing a lot of coming back. Ain't he? <laughs> Go ahead. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will be eagles be gathered together. Uh, so he's letting you know this. He comes back. Read. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, mm -hmm. and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now, he's letting them know when this end will be. After the tribulation, the stars huh, going to be what? Read that again. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, uh -huh. and the moon shall not give her light, uh -huh. and the stars shall fall from heaven, uh -huh. and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Shaken. Why? Because he's going to create a new heaven. Yeah. Uh, and a new earth. Am I right? And before that happens, everything down here that you see is going to be burned. From the east to the west, from the north to the south. Every piece of this earth, even the fish of the sea, burn up. And that's all. All in the army.
And it shall not pass. What he said was by setting you is going to happen. Huh? Amen? I read. But of that day and hour, no, no man. Mm -hmm. No, not the angels from heaven. Uh -huh. But my father only. The father only. You speak it. He's saying that the, the, when, when, when he comes, you know, only the father only. Read. But as the days of Noah were, mm -hmm. so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. No, no. He's talking about the rapture now. He's not. He's done with the tribulation. He's back on about answering the question of his disciples. Uh, uh, when shall this age end? This time right now. He's speaking to us right now. All right, read it. Uh huh. And then we can. What happened in the days of Noah? They were drunk, right? Given the men. Is that going on now? No. All right, All right read. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. All right, read. And knew not until the flood came, and <laughs> took them all away. Yeah. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now people aren't going to know, because they're too drunk with the world. When I was sitting in the car today, and I was thinking, man, if the rapture could take place right now, just be gone. Woo. Uh, that can happen. In fact, it will happen. Go ahead. And, and what the devil is deceiving people with now is you got time. Oh, yes. That's his weapon. Yep. You got time. <laughs> Make them think they got time. That's it. That was the that was he, he had a war room conversation with his imps. And they all came up with different solutions. And one said, well, just the see what make them think they have time. Huh? The Bible has the answer to that. <laughs> What's the answer? Our life is a vapor. Right. Yeah. Here today, come on. I read. Forty. Uh -huh. Then shall two be in the field. Uh -huh. The one shall be taken and the other left. Now, here he's going into, you got to. 50-50 chance of making it. 50-50. <laughs> Think about it. 50-50. Huh? When he did the seed in the sword, uh, uh, one out of four responded properly. Straight is the gate. Narrow is the way. Broad is the gate. Wide is the way. Huh? <laughs> That's why you got to get wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up with Jesus. Huh? Read. 41. Uh huh. Two women shall be grinding in the mill. Two in the wheel? The one shall be taken, uh -huh. and the other left. 50 50. Read. Watch, therefore. Watch. You got to do what? Wow. Read. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what, what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, uh -huh. and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Read. Therefore be ye also ready. Be what? Be ye also ready. Be ready. Read. For in such an hour that you think not the son, not the son of mankind. And what he's saying here is, when you decide you're going to do evil, boom, it's going to come. Yep. All right, read. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, mm -hmm. whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, mm -hmm. and gives them meat in due season? Yeah. Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Being about your father's business. Read. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him
This thing is real. Amen. Oh, that's great. Be ready. Thank you. We certainly thank God uh, for his grace and his mercy. Amen. We want as a blessing time for those that are out there listening to us today. Uh, we want you to give.